I think uh, one of the things where we um, we forget is that um, you know, for years, writers, creators have talked about you know certain things that could happen, and uh, we always like as as a writer, I'm always trying to come up with new ways of um, you know figuring out what's um, what's work, you know what would work as a story, what won't work as a story, and what's, you know, for me. And I don't have to worry about anybody else telling me how it's going to work and who do I have to pass it by. Is this a good, you know, is this a good thing to write about? Or is this a bad thing to write about? Is it something that I can work on? Is it something I should concentrate on? And the thing about, like, um, being part of something like, you know, like a mainstream um, organizations and comic books or anything. Like if you got a publisher or anything like that out there, who's, um, you know, who's got shareholders or not just shareholders, but owners and all that. And you still like have a committee um, where, you know, you got, you got people that are waiting on their money kind of thing, relying upon your success and success of your books. And sometimes, you know, it's up to you. It's, it's, on, it's your, up to you to actually do a good job and make sure it's, done well and sometimes that um, that can be a you know a bit of a uh, a turmoil situation for creators but the i think the worst thing uh, i think uh, those people who professionals who work in the industry have been able to rely upon uh companies to pay their bills you know to just basically write the checks off whenever they want so what they're facing now and which is sad, really sad, is that now um, they find that they uh, might not have a job anymore, right, in the industry, in the comic book industry. So after years and years of um, working hard at this, and, um, you know, the thing about comics is, and the main, you know, out there and the main big two publishers or any of the main corporate sort of entities, you have a board of directors who... Uh, who are you know who they're responsible to? So you got your your CEO, you got your publisher, you've got your uh, chip person or whatever, and it goes down from there. It goes down to the editor, the assistant editor, and so on. And then what happens is you go and go. Here's a book idea I have, especially if you're working on a mainstream book like say Spider-Man, say Batman, you know all those kind of books. So if you've got those sort of books you're working on, you go in and you pitch your idea. And this is something that Gail's mentioned this past week or so that. Everybody thinks it's just an easy job. You don't have that. But to be honest, any any person who picks up a comic book, right, knows that there is a um, that there are not just the one person who works on this. Sorry, all my comics are in um, sleeves. But you know, that not just one person works on this. That not only just one person's you know going to be uh, going to be putting their work out there. It's a whole it's a whole bunch of people. So you know, you've got some say like you got Chu, uh, you got. Chu here uh, from Image Comics. Uh, Chu, if I remember right, I think it's part of their creator-owned series. Um, you know, it's put up by um, put up by Image Comics. But you know, they come up with um, uh, Rob Lehman and also uh, sorry, John Lehman and Rob Guell Galero Galiari, uh, who I've both met and I've had, as you can see, I've had them sign because I really love this book. And this book came out around about the time that um, it was number 12, uh, around about the time that um, it was, I had started opening a store, right? I just planning to open a store. And so I'd gone up to Auckland and was able to, you know, I think it was about 2014 that they were there. And so I was able to get my book signed. And I was, you know, really excited about it. But the thing is that, you know, if you're anybody in the, you know, if you've been a comic book creator for a while, you see this. Um, sorry, comic book reader for a while, you see this list here of all the different people involved in behind the scenes of actually getting, making sure that the company that puts this comic out is, you know, they're responsible for the guy, people who hold the purse strings to make it happen, right? So uh, you can't, they're sitting there and you're pitching to them saying, well, I got this idea, especially to chew about about a chicken pandemic, like like SARS and chicken, if I remember right, right, Co uh, caused a whole lot of deaths. Uh, came out of, again, came out of China, right. So, so um, Rob, um, sorry, um, John Lehman based his book on that topic about how chickens were uh, providing, um, putting out disease, 
and all that. And so you can eat chicken. So his whole idea was that now there's a there's a uh, there's an FBI type uh, network where they uh, you know they rule and make sure that I mean carry out the law to uh, make sure that restaurants aren't selling chicken, right, or chicken meat or chicken products like eggs or something because people die from it. And so. Um, the main characters there, there's two of them, I can't remember the name of them, but they're out there, they're policing this. Um, and so it's the whole thing about food, and which is kind of uh, interesting, right? Of course, you've got the Food Wars, the anime and manga out of um, Japan. Amazing, amazing series. I loved it. Uh, I, as being a chef, you know, I, I'm quite interested in food, of course, uh, and I'm always, you know, cooking all the time probably about five, three, four times a week. I usually cook in bulk so I can put it away. So the idea that we who have been, you know, being part of the, um, part of the consumer, consumers of the industry don't understand this. Don't understand all these names here, right? It's farcical. It's like thinking that we're children, we don't understand. So you look at all the different names there, you think of the two creators, the artist, and, um, um, the writer, writer comes up with it, and the and the uh, artist Rob basically sits down and you know emails and whatever postage whatever back and forth um, notes and stuff, and they put this stuff together. So the idea that comic books is a one person job is not real, right? And and uh, and if if anybody believes that's a that thing, it's not real. Even me uh, working on Incredible, uh, it doesn't get produced. On my own merits i have to get somebody to to do the primary artwork and then i work with that and then i write you know having written a story and so on and i go in and i do the lettering the uh, the design work the coloring when it's needed uh the setup the typeset uh the arranging of all the um panels especially if if i've decided i'm going to change it around a bit to make it more exciting later on and all that so the idea that um you know that as um that we're unwise, especially if we've been supported for decades, like myself, probably around about 30 or plus 35 odd years, I'm buying and selling and merchandising, you know, and buying merch, all that, uh, swapping, uh, you know, auctions, what have you, over the counter, um, and negotiating for sales, right? Now, The thing is, when you've always had that idea, um, that whole, um, that um, sort of what you call the safety net, you know, or if we go around now, the net around the trampolines. So the baby can't fall out. Oh, sorry, the child cannot fall out. Even the adults have it up when they don't fall out. So the problem there is when you can't, when you're not used to that, being able to fall out of that, right? Uh, to figure out what else is on the other side and what happens if I break my arm you get this, you get an industry that falls up mainstream, and I'm talking about mainstream, that falls over within three weeks. Their one distributor, their one safety net, isn't gonna be happening all year. No more distribution. So then you got, uh, you got DC going, I'm gonna get two more d distributors to distribute the comics out. Shops are going, uh, I'm not gonna get any comics for the next two months, so how am I supposed to pay my bills and pay my rent? my power and so on i've heard of shops in america one shop in particular where the rent the guy's gonna close because the landlord said um so i'm getting money so what you're not paying me so either you pay me for the rent or you're out and the guys go, i gotta shut down man so all this is because of decade long creations of no, um of the safety net around the industry of comic books nobody taking chances like especially in the dc and marvel uh not sorry not taking chances but just putting out as many books as possible that people don't even read i had that happen with the store when i was putting in the store people would just jump on um just come in and i'd go hey what well, are you interested in this book like a new number one would come out i'd be like wow this would be cool you know maybe uh, yeah look they're promoting it maybe i can get someone interested and um, people were like that book and it's out of marvel and started dc that book and so you go well 
people don't even like the plot of the book. So they open it up and they kind of, they don't even like the plot of the book. So what are you going to do? But hey, Marvel and DC keep sending these books out. And you keep ending this whole, having stores, you know, 50% of your stores full of junk, basically. So you've got all these, uh, you know, creators out there who, who've never written a book before, especially a comic book, who basically have people uh, sitting around drinking coffee, right? Uh, it was all and stuff. There's no sort of uh, action, there's no proper plotting, there's no sort of adventure element to it because it's all about it's all about the wine woman as they, um, one of the YouTubers call it, so wine moms, because actually the stories are for wine moms, they're not actually folks people who have grown up reading the superhero comics or what the comics is actually about it's like wine mom, right you're just sitting there, having a coffee and that's what the story is about so then you go, well, why why have they kept doing this? Well, once again, it's because they don't have comic writers. They've relied upon non-comic writers. They've relied on people that have written like uh, young, um, young adult fiction, people who have been working in magazine, advertising, but because of race, they get a, they get a door hand in. So they kicked out all the white guys, legends and icons of writing great comic books. As I said, Amazing creators just went out the door and did that, started doing their own thing because guess what? You voted for the wrong person. Your skin color is the wrong thing. You all, uh, you know, you have a different viewpoint on on what the story should be written. Yeah, and so now you're a failure of an industry. In three weeks, how do you how do you see a, a industry fall within three weeks? You don't see it in any other industry, right? And so. You know, millions of dollars lost, and unemployment high up. People told not to do any work because they can't; they won't be paid. So the safety net around the trampoline that they've been playing in came off in three weeks, and boom, they're all up there going screaming, going, "Hey, we got, we got issues." You know how we need work. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. One of the other things is creators for com creators for stores. What a joke, right? What a joke. After years of like really put, pushing rubbish onto uh, onto stores by Marvel and DC, now you're saying, "Oh, we, we really care about the stores." You guys weren't caring about the stores last year when 50 stores got uh, closed down, right? Or the year before, or the year before. When the stores were going, listen, you need to fix this. Stop doing crossovers. Even I was saying that about five, seven years ago. I'm sick and tired of crossovers. I can't collect, you know, I want. I don't want to be reading 100 books to get that one story. Why don't you just give me my um, eight issues or six issues and let me just read that. And if you want to write your other stories, just go put them as part of something else. And the other thing I noticed is that the keep, rather than sticking to one Line of um, uh, one line of say um, um, say Amazing Spider-Man. Now you got 10, 20 different Spider-Man books. Why would you want to do that? Now you're actually watering down your content, your your importance of having a book, right? Your main character is watered down in so many different things, right? You want to make him black. You're going to make him Asian. You're going to make him white. You're going to make him uh, European. You know, uh, Indian. You know, and actually, I'll carry like way back when. I did buy an Indian, uh, and that was only a four shot, and that was a good thing. It wasn't a long running thing. It was just a, it was a gimmick four shot to get um, Gotham Comics out of India to get into comics in America. So that was okay. That was okay. It was a four shot worked. But here's the thing: every every twelve issues, they start a new series with a new, with the same character with a new title because each time they fail. So rather than getting a top class writer to come and write it, they keep the same writer writing the same crap. Oh, it's got a new number one, new number one. I just bother, I don't even bother anymore with comics. It's the mainstream comics. It's just gone to a point where it's like, why? Why do you think people was gonna, are going to come up and keep buying new number ones all the time? There's no no value to them. And and the other way they do it is they put about 20 different, 15, 15 20, 30 different variant covers on that one one comic. It's like it's like they're trying to make money off variants and not off the actual comics. So it's you know, so they'll put out a variant and be like about ten different covers 
uh, and six issues later, it's <laughs> sorry, uh, didn't do too well. Now we're gonna we're gonna restart it in about another three months. What a waste, right? So rather than getting good writers, good artists, good creators involved, you're just basically rehashing the same joke again. And there's no challenge to it. There's no challenge to them. So now that the safety net is gone, they've fallen over. And now they're coming back and saying, hey, hey, maybe we should do this. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do that. Seven years ago, like I said, stop doing crossovers. Stop doing variants. I actually end up just buying the one variant. It doesn't even know it's number three or something because, I, oh, it's a cover. Cool. Don't even read it. All right. It's a nice cover. Cool. Buy, put aside one, you know, one in three months. Because at the end of the day, there's no point to reading a monthly book if that's how they behave. That you know that it's just like watching, say, like uh, Firefly. Uh, you know, as soon as they start a show, it's like you already know halfway through they're going to close, um, you know, halfway through the season. They're going to cancel it or they don't even guarantee that's going to be there so why even bother start watching it it's the same thing with comic books why bother reading a comic book start on a comic book series number one if <laughs> you probably you know you think in the back of your head this isn't going to last right or when it just gets good like the hickman series with the x-men right with the Krakow thing then there's somebody comes in and changes it it's like you guys aren't even really playing the playing the long game you're just playing stop start stop start and so what happened <clears throat> customers decided well stop start stop stop start stop start isn't going to work for me i'm going to go somewhere else and then then they go oh you you know well you guys are bad customers we, you know you know like, well brand loyalty can only be people can only be loyal for so long right they say they say about never meet your heroes right because at the end of the day if your heroes turn out to be bad people in real life you ain't gonna follow that and that's been happening with with the comic industry with people at um conventions with people online and social media has made all these people who have been real you know rotten people anyway have actually shown up who they are and sadly it's harmed the comp um, industry and here's where we are now and i guess um there is not much to say but the fact is that they basically bought the bought the farm they got to like they got to live on it right they got to make it work and sadly the crops aren't growing uh the um you know the markets aren't working the customers not coming to to buy uh you're not even actually putting product out so sadly you you put out rotten rotten vegetables right rotten fruit who's going to buy curdle milk and this is what's happened with the comic book industry people have bought them you know the um I guess the fertilizer wasn't good enough and they've been pumping it up with variant issues. Think of variant issues. Variant covers as fertilizer, right? They kept putting fertilizer, 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 fertilizer. And at the end of the day, it was people got fatigued by variant. And then they kept doing the whole thing with like, um, you know, let's give you just a good, you know, let's give you um, crossovers every three months. Oh, guess what? Here's another crossover. Oh, remember that crossover we just did? Yeah, we changed things. Yeah. Oh, forget about that one. Now we're going to do a new crossover. So that's why we are where we are. Sadly, I mean, I don't want to see this industry fail. It's my, it's my, I love this industry. It's my passion. It's been my freaking passion for about 30 odd five years, right? Um, you know, my home is, you know, I'm known as a comic book guy in my city, right? In my area. And that's not me saying it. It's like my, my friends introduced me as that. Or if they want to say, who, who are you talking about? They go, oh, the comic book guy. Oh, no, that is. You know, and that's something big to live up to not that i want to be living up to it but that's something that's on me and at the end of the day you can't you can't expect people to just buy whatever you put out because of the because there's only so much money and after this this there's going to be so much less money after this and sadly that's where we are and like i like i um you know talked with um um you know did the live stream with Hinu. And she said, yeah, it's going to be tight. And think of that across the board to everybody. Everybody's going to be tight on money. And then you want to say, well, you know, and this is something Heather Antos said the other day, the um, edit, chief editor at Valiant Comics. They just put a movie out, right? Uh, Bloodshot. It just came out just at the start of pandemic, right? And it, so they only made about, I think, 50% 50, 50 of what they put out. And, of course, 10% uh, uh, more was actually 
about 25% more they spend on advertising. So she comes out and goes, American fans, comic fans are horrible, are the worst in the world. How do you, how do you want to bring in all your readers by, you know, throwing abuse out there, you know, and punching them in the face with words, basically, and you just damaged your brand. Everybody knows you, you're part of Valiant. Hey, your movie came out. It didn't make so much because we had a pandemic, but you came out and did that. It's on you, Heather. And sadly, that's on many comic pros. They are behaved this way because that's how they um, retailers suffer, right? The comic book stores suffer, and they've been suffering for at least a decade now. And they've been crying out. They've been calling for change. They've been calling for change. But now they're going to blame it all on the pandemic. But no, no. They're going to ignore all those um, store owners. They're going to ignore all the shops that have been saying, stop doing this. We're going to, we're going to end up closing. And they have closed. And sadly, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. Um, you know, it's Dawn Patrol, you know, right? You're, you're looking out. Um, it's, just, it's just a mess out there. And all you got to do is pick up the bodies. And the good thing is um, the co only comic creators have been prepared for this. They've been going to directly to customer, customer. They've been going up crowdfunding. They've been um, putting on their own, um, uh, creating their own audiences, their own customer base. They've been creating them on their own merits, not on a company, right? Not on a safety net because they don't have any safety net. So when you have no safety net, you try whatever you can to make it work. And so that's where on a positive, indie creators are going to be coming out of this way off better than anybody else out there, than professionals. So thanks for listening. Malfunction. Cheers, guys. I'll be up soon with another broadcast. Kakitiano.